What is up, everyone in the trenches here today? We're going to go ahead and give you the quarterback talk for your fantasy draft in 2020 right after this. Bro, box. Box. Yeah. I need you to put the Matrix stuff back on, bro. But I didn't want the Matrix stuff. The box is coming back, and we have to give him a proper. I, I thought you didn't want the Matrix. No. Solid colors preferred. Now you just look like the Hulk. <laughs> See, that was just weird. I don't know what you're trying to do here. Can we just get to the fantasy talk already? Uh, uh, Lee. This is weird. Uh, uh, Lee. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He's kind of like the Hulk that didn't want to come out. He, like, no. Doc. Doc. I, I'm right. trying to fix it. It won't fix. Hold on. Coach. Coach, please save oh. us from this guy. Can we talk about quarterbacks real quick? <laughs> Who's here? Aaron Rodgers is in the, in the top ten. We could talk about that. I I don't know what type of, I don't I don't get it. I this is why I don't look at ADP too much. Aaron Rodgers not in the top ten in the league. Maybe I'll let Johnny take it. Johnny, Aaron Rodgers is in the top ten. Unleash your fury, bro. I've already given many many times inside and outside of the matrix my thoughts on Aaron Rodgers. In real life, in real time, inside the box and outside the box, and even in fantasy football. Um, look, just look at the numbers, man. I mean, he throws for 4,000 yards every year. You know, he consistently throws the least amount of picks every year. So you're not, so you're not you know, you're not losing points. Uh, yes, it, it might be a little tough because obviously we, we talked about on a previous show that, that the coach is going to want to to be more run heavy this year. But – and I know it's a fantasy game and you, you're looking for stats, but just tell me that Aaron Rodgers is not one of the top 10 fantasy guys. You know, I, I think, I think it's ridiculous. I'm not saying he's number one. I'm not saying he's even number two or three, but he's got to be a top 10 guy. I, I, I definitely think he's a top 10 guy. And if you don't want to take him and you want to leave him around, I'll gladly get him in the fifth or sixth round and I'll see you in the final. But well, coach Kelly, please explain to me how Kyler, Ky, uh, Kyler Murray, sorry, I butchered his name. Kyler Murray is ahead of Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Josh Allen, and Matt Ryan. And Carson Wentz. Sorry, I didn't throw him in there. I think it's just media hype with Kyler Murray being ahead of all those guys for him to be a second-year player. Um, he's an interesting guy. He averaged about 18 and a half points a game. He uh, he, he, he uh, has had a he, he has a great um, addition to him in a DeAndre Hopkins, um, Fitzgerald, and another um, gr a great group of receivers. He threw for around 20 touchdowns, ran for about 500 yards. Um, pretty good. It's the pass-heavy offense, um, which, I mean, this NFL is kind of lean more towards. Um, uh, it seems like, if I remember correctly, they ran maybe uh, three to four wide, 66% of the time, um, which is high. Um, um, so they're going to, they're going to rely on the pass, but for him to be that high, that, that high, highly ranked, I don't think Kyler Murray is going to be that good this season. I mean, I would understand if you want to put him in the top 15, he, I, I think he's a top 15 quarterback easily. Yeah. I mean, you, you if you have a, a talented, uh, wide receiver, like DeAndre Hopkins, it's hard not to be top 15. But they, you said 66% of the time they're going to go three or four spread. So they're going to throw the ball a lot. Um, they have a veteran in their Fitzgerald. So it's an easy assumption to say he's top 15. But now you're top six to top 15 is two completely different conversations. And I can't get over the fact that the box is literally still in the box. Can I speak on about Kyler Murray real quick? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Initially, really wasn't a fan of his, but you know what? Under that offense, Cliff Klingsbury, Cliff Klingsbury if I, I don't think I butchered his name, at the end of the day, I mean, we're talking about stats here. You're looking at Kyler Murray threw for 37-22 last year, 20 touchdowns to 12 picks. He also rushed for 544 yards and four more rushing touchdowns. And he just got DeAndre Hopkins. So it's kind of like a, a double-edged sword. He's, his stats should get better after add, adding hop, but there's also 
the you know the like they had the rookie wall, the sophomore slump, you know maybe he takes a step back. He's got to get used to Hopkins. Maybe they figure him out. Maybe they tee off on him. Maybe his numbers aren't as good. But under that offense, he still has the opportunity to put up some serious, serious numbers. Um, now that he's, you know, better in real life or in fantasy than other guys you mentioned, no, I don't think so. But, you know, depending on how many people are in your league, if you, I mean, I, I know guys that run, you know, 12, 15 man leagues. And you want to round out your team, and then damn, I could I couldn't get a, a one of the top quarterbacks, and you get stuck with Kyler Murray, or he's your backup, and you got to put him in for a couple of weeks. You could do a lot worse. You could do a lot worse. And this is coming from somebody who is not a fan of his. All right, so now listen up, Coach K. Tell me when you would pick Kyler Murray, so I know to pick him the round before when we do our draft, because <laughs> um, we're in a ten man league. So where do you take Kyler Murray if you take him? depending on who's on the board. In our league, for you, the second round. <laughs> you, you, you can have him, dog. <laughs> you can have him. <laughs> no, Johnny took a uh, box. You, wasn't it you last year that took Patrick Mahomes? What was it? I mean, well, yeah. why, don't you, why don't you ask Kelly? He hasn't, he hasn't <laughs> let me live that down over, over a year. <laughs> if he didn't As get involved, I'm going to take some water over here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because the thing is that I think I had, like, the seventh pick and all the running backs were gone. And, like, I think the top two receivers were gone. And I didn't want to settle for, like, a, you know, a, a second-tier running back. And Mahomes was just sitting there. Yeah, probably would have been better to take Lamar Jackson because of the, the year he had. But Mahomes is Mahomes. I'm like, all right, I'll just take Mahomes. What the hell? I mean, I'll, I'll figure out. And Mahomes carried my team to the semifinals. And had I now run into freaking the animal that was Lamar Jackson, I probably would have made the final just on Patrick Mahomes. Um, you know, he, he, he was, he, there, there's weeks that he carried my team, but I took him because of my positioning. I mean, I wasn't going to take my homes first, second or third overall, but I think I had like the seventh or eighth pick and all the guys that I really wanted to be like my number one, my stud were all gone. So I'm like, well, I'll stick with the guy that I know is going to get me whatever, you know, 300 fantasy points for the year. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you you jumped up a little bit high, but it, it was a good move for you because he gives you so much production. So when you're talking top two quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, those are the type of guys that it's okay, you know, if there's certain runs where you're found in a situation where you're out of the top guys for each position, hey, go ahead, be that guy. Take Patrick Mahomes. Take a chance with those guys because they're going to produce at a level that no other quarterback Probably no other quarterback in the league can. Um, another guy that I question a little bit is just because, and I'll we'll say it again, Houston, Deshaun Watson. He is talented enough to be a top five quarterback, but I this year don't see him in the top five quarterbacks. Um, and then I also noticed, who, who are your sleepers? I like a guy like Ter- Derek Carr. You know, if, if you have to pick up a, a backup quarterback, right, and he's not going to be your starter every week, but every once in a while, he does have an offense, and we can see him produce to the level that we saw him once. Derek Carr is, like, ranked top 30. Some Most people don't even have him top 20, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but Coach Kelly, tell me, where would you take a guy like Derek Carr or who was another sleeper for you? I, I also like Derek Carr this year. Um uh, second year up under John Gruden's uh, system. I think that Derek Carr has some uh, highly um, valued weapons around him, including his uh, tight end, his uh, running back, and and uh, his young receiving core. Don't even um, say it because he's already gone <laughs> off the board, bro. It's already too late. <laughs> and, and, and Derek, so Derek Carr does have um, some <laughs> solid players around him that that that. Um, he can be a great uh, bye week fill in for your starting quarterback. Yes, I absolutely. You you can put him in there on on uh, Patrick Mahomes bye week easily, and then not only that, Derek Carr box. I see you in the box. You're still in the box, bro. Could you please take down the Matrix thing and just talk to us like a regular box? 
But I'm in the Matrix. I mean, uh, I, first of all, the Matrix is one of my favorite movies of all time. It is extremely intricate, way more intricate than fantasy football will ever be. But let's go back to talking fantasy football. Let me take the Neo glasses off as I talk about Derek Carr. I grew a coach. I love Derek Carr. Uh, I, we talked about it when it did, we talked about the AFC West. Listen, guy puts up solid numbers. I genuinely believe if Gruden just helps him take that next step, you know, like I said, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, he was one of the top, you know, candidates for most valuable player, you know, and they, they're, they've added some stuff around him. Uh, Jacobs obviously had a great rookie year running the, running the ball. Um, I like Derek Carr. He, he's an incredibly solid quarterback. Uh, love everything he does. And, and you know, like you said, yeah, maybe he's not going to be your number one guy. But, you know, Derek Carr is, is you know, you fill out a team. And you say, oh, well, you know, hey, I got a, st- I got a stable of running backs. Or I got a, a core of wide receivers. And, yeah. I, I, and then, well, you know, I couldn't really take my quarterback. Right, you know what? I'm going to roll with Derek Carr. He's going to give you points every week. You know, he's going to go for 200, 240, 260, you know, two or three touchdowns, maybe a pick, maybe a rushing touchdown here and there. And, you know, he's going to put up numbers. Uh, like I said, I just hope that Gruden really helps him take that next step. Because um, he, 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 got, he got better toward the end of last year. He ended up with a good statistical year since we were talking about statistics. Uh, not really one loss record per se, but statistics. Statistically, he had a very good year. Um, and I think he can get even better this year. So Derek Carr is definitely uh, on my sleeper list. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely take him over a guy like Ryan Tannehill. On top of the fact that they're going to throw the ball a lot more in the Raiders, um, they're going to run the ball all day long in uh, in Tennessee. So just for that sheer fact, Derek Carr is going to be, have more possibility of getting getting you those yards, getting you those touchdown passes. They just pass the ball more, and it's something that you should look at in fantasy is a situational, how is that offense playing? Um, what style of offense is it? That's where you, you get those sleepers is by picking guys like Derek Carr. Ryan Tannehill is not a better quarterback than, Der- than Derek Carr, and it, that's – not sour apples to Ryan Tannehill because I respect the man and I think he's doing a great job in Tennessee. But if I'm saying fantasy, who's going to take me to, into the playoffs and maybe past, if you have a stacked running back line, a good one, two uh, wide receiver, and you do have to wait, Derek Carr is a very, uh, uh, what did you say, Johnny? How do you say it? What do you mean? Uh, what, what? It's a good pick. It's a good pick. Uh, yeah. I, I, no, it's a, it's a solid, <laughs> he's a solid pick. And, and by the way, Regarding the Ryan Tannehill comparison, again, this is not real life. We are talking about fantasy football. In real life, Tannehill obviously got some, you know, he got the Titans almost to the Super Bowl last year because he, in real life, he, they ask him not to make mistakes, to just, you know, run a, a simplified offense, hand the ball off a lot, make certain throws. But when you look at his stat sheet, yeah, he might be quote unquote accurate or his, you know, percentage might be up. But it's not like he's got a 300-yard, five-touchdown game. You know, that's not his game. You know, if, you, if, if, you're, if Ryan Tannehill is your starting quarterback in fantasy, you're losing. You're, you're, and, and it's not because of Ryan Tannehill. It's because that's not his game. He is not a, 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 a stat monster of a quarterback. He's a guy who's going to hand the ball off 30 times to, to Derrick Henry. He's going to run end around, short passes, safe passes. In real life, he's going to have great percentage numbers. And hell, yeah, he might end up with, you know, 3,500, 4,000 yards. But he's not going to throw you 40 touchdowns. You know, he's not going to, he, he's not going to run in an extra 10. He, that's not his game. Uh, so it's, it's not so much that he's better or worse than, than Derek Carr. Is that for the sake of fantasy, you know. Don't, he's a better fantasy pick. Yeah, he, you, you have to separate the matrix, the fantasy, from the reality. You know, you have to, you have to say in reality, you know, Tannehill might get his team further than the Derek Carr will, but in fantasy, I'd rather have Derek Carr in his numbers. Okay. I've had enough of looking at you with the big green screen behind you. Could you take that down, please? I will. Coach K, do you have any closing on the quarterback fantasy talk? Uh, just consider Tom Brady out there. Tom Brady might move up real fast to be a sleeper. He has two Pro Bowl uh, wide receivers on his team. 
um, plus Gronk. So, um, you know, uh, it'll be real good. You know, that NFC South, as we said earlier in our, in our NFC sh- uh, South uh, preview, um, is going to be a shootout. So Tom Brady is going to be one of those quarterbacks slinging in, in that conference. Well, guys, thank you so much. That is your fantasy quarterback talk for the 2020 season. Please do us all a favor. If you have not already, please like, subscribe, hit the little bell. But most importantly, we want you to comment. We, we want to hear what you have to say about the quarterback talk, what you have to say about all, our, all the divisional predictions, and any opinions that you have on this upcoming 2020 football season. Thank you so much. You have a good night.